Welcome to another part of EZFM tutorial. In this part we are going to take a look at the network application. Before we start, please make sure your EZFM is updated to at least 1.5 because previous versions did not have their own replication. Instead they uh, relied on one that's built into Unreal Engine and in this tutorial I'm going to use the internal one. So here's how a multiplayer project could look like. I have a couple of spawn spots and um, if I start the game now I'll get two aircraft and if I increase the throttle the screen on the right updates. As you can see I can fly but uh, the one on the left, that server cannot actually see my aircraft moving. To fix that we need to make sure that the movement is replicated from the authority or the hosting client or dedicated server uh, to all the clients. Now to do that we need to open our blueprint, blueprint of our, our airplane and make sure that the replicates is on and we need to turn off replicate movement for the base component because we are going to use one that's in EasyFM so now we go to EasyFM, find a tab that says replication and make sure that the replicate movement is enabled. Uh, I'll explain the remaining options later. For now, as you can see, when I try to play the game, things don't change much, except now I cannot move at all, because this, uh, this movement replication will always uh, send me back to where the server sees our airplane. Uh, but, however, if I switch to server, I can actually move, and other client can even see me move. Now, the reason for that is uh, because in Unreal Engine, the only way that uh, the client can send data back to to server is via remote procedure calls. So for our client we need to make sure that every time we move a joystick or move the throttle this information will be communicated to the server so it can actually update the inputs on the server side as well. Now let me quickly show you how to create such a remote procedure call. Um, we need to create a new custom event like this and let's call it global server and its replication will be set to run on server and now every time we move the throttle, instead of changing throttle on our local copy, we are going to call this remote procedure. And let's add a parameter to it that will control where the actual position of the throttle is. And connect it here. And you can unplug all this and now on the server side every time it receives this event it will change throttle position on its own copy of uh, of your of your object okay so now that we have this done when we start our game Uh, our client can actually control uh, throttle as well and it's visible on the server side and 
if there are multiple clients, uh, each of them will receive this update. So let's do the same for other controls. So let's say pitch. Uh, again, create new custom event. Uh, let's call it each server. Again, uh, run on server. It needs a parameter and it will do its work on the server side. And from the client, we will only call this remote procedure. So it doesn't need any other connections like this. And again, when I run the game, I can pitch up and down from the client. All the other client controllable parameters uh, need to be set up this way. And uh, that's it for the basics. Now I could uh, explain uh, the replication uh, parameters a little bit. So let's start with uh, high precision. Uh, this will send uh, uh, updates of positions from the server with uh, full flow of precision. In other words, um, smaller than one centimeter, but uh, it will consume more bandwidth. This is uh, useful maybe if you have uh, airplane that you can view from the cockpit and even uh, one centimeter wobble would be visible. Uh, movement replication frequency movement replication frequency controls how many times per second uh, is position update sent. 10 is like uh, reasonable but if you have uh, good LAN connection you can uh, ramp it up and get extra precision or uh, extra responsivity. Mm, smoothing will, instead of um, instantly snapping your local copy into where the server sees it, it will like smoothly transition it into a new position over time to reduce like warping but uh, again it will it will allow it to sort of slide away from its real position a little bit it's uh, best to experiment with this and find best compromise for your game jitter filter will filter out uh, uneven timing of position updates. In other words, uh, in uh, any real si situation, the server will run at a different frame rate from all the clients. And of course, uh, the internet itself uh, doesn't have completely stable uh, travel time of packets. So they uh, will always arrive uh, with slightly off timing and this filter will uh, adjust them so um, the object on the screen doesn't uh, visibly warp forward and backward. Uh, max time is the max time in seconds uh, over which this filter can average out this position and centering is how quickly it tries to return to average position so it doesn't uh, accumulate the error. Again, um, it's best to uh, tune them to your specific game or even specific object uh, in your game which can all have different different parameters, so for instance something like missile that um, you usually see from great distance can have more smoothing that uh, 
uh, airplane that the player can always see from close up and one more thing that the, the you should be aware of in uh, case your objects are being spawned with uh, initial velocity so for instance uh, if we spawned this airplane with like some starting velocity like let's say this we need to after setting our initial parameters, our initial velocity, our initial positions and all that we need to call hard sync. This will uh, force mm, the server copy to send its exact position and exact velocity to all the clients uh, instead of relying on smoothing and jitter filter to like interpolate into this position because um, this would uh, otherwise cause the uh, client positions and client velocities to be off uh, first couple of seconds after the object is spawned and that's uh, it for our quick tutorial if uh, you didn't understand something it's best to take a look at the example project and actually if there's uh, interest i could do sort of like more rambly walkthrough of this project where i could explain uh, why are certain parts don't like they are <laughs>